Make a date with Rev. Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online. Truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marque bringing you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. Reverend Ebenezer Marque is the head pastor of Living Streams International. I've said it over and over again where we meet behind the Trade Fair, behind Zenith College. Graphic Online. You can always subscribe by punching the bell button on your YouTube to subscribe and it's for free. Uh, this morning, I like to call my, my, my thoughts Dump Hallelujah. I've just been thinking you know, in, there's a story in Luke chapter 1, and for me, Luke chapter 1 is one of the most cardinal uh, stories of, of Christmas. And people, I mean, of course, they neglected it because it, it didn't really talk about Jesus. It talked about, uh, you know, um, a man called Zacharias and uh, Elizabeth, who were from the priest the tribe of Aaron, the Levitical tribe. So, well, I mean, the rest of the story really focuses on Judah, but, and the offsprings of Judah, that is Jesus. But there is a niggling story in, in, in the, the pre-stories before Christmas. The pre-story before the birth of Jesus. It had to do with two very interesting people, Elizabeth and Mary. Now the Bible says, and, um, and Zacharias, the, the, uh, Zachariah, the husband of Elizabeth, was a priest. And he is the one who stands in the presence of God. Uh, he is the one who brings offering to God. He is the one who intercedes for people. In actual fact, everything around about Zachariah speaks faith. Because he is the leader. He inspires people. He gives sermon. He tells people, I mean, have faith, have confidence, and everything in God. And his wife, Elizabeth, was very old and stricken in years. Past childbearing age, she crossed the Rubicon for childbearing. Now here's the interesting thing about it. One time as he went to minister in the temple, the Bible said an angel appeared to him. And when the angel appeared to him, the angel told him that your wife will be pregnant. And your wife is going to be pregnant because of God's glory, because of what God wants to do. And guess what? The priest, the father of faith, the priest, the faith instructor, the priest, the faith teacher, the priest, the faith encourager, the priest, the faith uh, instructor, the one who breaks down faith for people to, to understand. The Bible says the first thing that came out of his mouth was, whoa, 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 hold on. An angel appeared. An angel has appeared. And the angel is telling you that your, your wife is going to be pregnant. And the priest said, no, 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 these things are not possible. Hold on, hold on. Angel, I, I, hold on. This one, dear, you've gone too far. My, my wife is this then. The father of faith, the, 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 the symbol of faith, the one when he stands, he gives one encouragement that God is right there. And God is dealing with the, in the affairs. And God is stepping. I mean, the leader, the father figure in the, uh, of faith in, in the house. Oh, and yet... When God says, I want to do something, he declares it's impossible. And now, I thought that the first thing he would have said was, Hallelujah, praise God. But the words he uttered, God then did something. God made him dumb. Said so that he can hear, but he can't speak. And the reason why God did it, he said, I need to shut you up. Because if I allow you to walk out of this place, you will contaminate what I'm doing with your faithlessness with your pronouncement of faithlessness, with the things you're going to be saying. So I need to shut you up just for the sake, for that miracle to happen. And after it, it has taken place, I'll open your mouth. So if you realize, after John was born, then his mouth opened, then he could talk. So his dumbness was for a period. God silenced him for a period so that faith will not be contaminated, so that doubt will be thrown away, so that the processes, divine process that God wanted to do, he wouldn't become an interference by his pronouncements. So God shut him up. Are you aware that sometimes God needs to take us out of the picture? God needs to take us out of the picture for him to fulfill his process, for him to finish what he wants to do. Because sometimes when you are right in the picture, you, 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 you become a stumbling block to the faith of other people. By the things you say. By the words that come out of your mouth. So sometimes I've known of people. I, I, I have stories. 
where God wanted to do something and one man was standing and becoming an obstacle of faith and all those things. He fell sick for a moment and I remember when he fell sick, everybody else was praying for him. I couldn't come to the, to the place of prayer because anytime I go to pray for them, God says, step aside, I'm doing something. It was when the miracle had taken place, when the miracle was beyond his reach, then all of a sudden, uh, people came around as usual to say, look, let's pray, let's pray for the person. And then God said to me, don't even pray, thank me, because I've released him from the hospital bed. He was placed in the hospital, not for any other thing, but for him to get out of the way, so that what God wanted to do will be accomplished. Because he had become a stumbling block of faith for other people. God took him aside. So sometimes God will take you out so that the time he'll bring you back, when you open your mouth, you won't open your mouth and speak words of doubt, but you begin to praise God and say, hallelujah, a miracle has happened. So God placed Zachariah in a prison called the dumb hallelujah prison so that you can't talk. I will show you that I can accomplish what I want to do by uh, making you impotent by, by incapacitating you so that you can't do anything by rendering you impotent God said it so that your words will not become a hindrance to other people so sometimes God takes some people out so that he can accomplish what he wants to do oh boy I don't want to go to that cell that jailhouse of dumb hallelujahs I want to say immediately God said he's going to do it I'm going to say yes God I believe yes God I trust yes God I'm standing with you God I know you can do it you've done it before you can do it again you have a history of doing things that are impossible in the sight of men so mine is not going to be the yardstick of your failure Mine is not going to be the, the, the place or the, 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 the quagmire of failure for you. The thing that I've been expecting, the things that I've been praying for, mine, my situation is not going to be the place of your failure. Never, never. Let God be true and every man a liar. So listen, there are things about you that I, when God comes and says, I'm going to do this, and I pray that he comes and tells me every time, I'm going to do this. I love that. But here's the thing. I wouldn't like to contaminate what he wants to do with my mouth by speaking adversely by speaking words of doubt and unbelief instead of faith and when God says he wants to do something we need to mix it with our words of faith the Bible says Paul was writing about the Israelites the reason why they couldn't go to the promised land was God gave them a promise but they could not mix his promise with faith they could not mix the promise they had given to them with faith so you know one thing don't let god don't push god to place you in a in a place where you can't where you be impotent for him to do what he wants to do cooperate with god i don't want to be in the land of dumb hallelujah i want to be in the place where my hallelujah can be heard loudly and here's the interesting thing about zachariah the day the miracle took place he opened his mouth and the first thing he did when he opened his mouth was to praise God. The last thing he did before his mouth was shut, he doubted God. But the first thing he did when the miracle happened, when his mouth was open, he praised God. So Zachariah had learned his lesson. I hope you don't walk the pathway of Zachariah's dumb hallelujah pathways, or dumb hallelujah prisons. Start mixing what God wants to do with your life with faith right now. See you later.